Do you like creating particle simulations? Well, in this video, we are going to make this awesome effect inside Blender using our latest product, Particle FX. Particle FX lets you create a stunning, unique particle effects quickly and easily, all powered by jumped nodes inside Blender. So, let's jump right in. Stick around until the end to see how you can get a $30 render coupon from Fox Render Farm. I'll start by pressing Shift A and adding a Bezier curve to the scene. Then I'll go into edit mode and shape it into something interesting. It doesn't have to be perfect, I can always tweak it later. Now instead of adding particle effects directly to the curve, I prefer to do it separately. So I'll add a new mesh plane and name it particle system. Since I already have particle effects added to my assets library, I can simply go to add modifier, particle effects, modifiers, emitters and this time because we are using a curve, I'll select the curve emitter. I'll disable the self checkbox and then select our curve object from here. Immediately you can see points distributed across the curve. Here we can control how the points are spawned. I'll keep it on count and increase the point count a bit. There's also a multiplier. I'll leave it at 1 for now until we get the basic sim working. I can adjust the radius and add a bit of randomness to it. Here I have a few settings to control the distribution of the points. I'll set the type to curve normal which lets me offset points along the curves normal. If you want to change the offset direction, just go to edit mode with the curve selected, pick a control point and press ctrl T to tilt it. You'll see the offset direction change in real time. Tangent will move the points along the curve, which I don't need for this. That's it for the emitter, now let's add a simulator. Go to add modifier, particle effects, simulators and this time choose the spawn rate curve particle simulator since we are using a curve. Hit play and I get this. Here in the add velocity, I can change that velocity. If I set it to random with min and max around 0.1, the points will move in all directions. From points adds velocity from the emitter's origin. Normal pushes them along the curve normal. And tangent moves them along the curve. Which is what I want here. I'll reduce the velocity scale a bit. Next I'll randomize the lifetime. Set it to random with min at 10 and max at 50. You'll notice particle stop spawning at frame 50, so I'll extend that to frame 120. That'll be our total animation length. Now let's enable noise. You will immediately see particles flying all over the place. I'll lower the strength, reduce the scale and add some distortion. Make sure your threshold value is smaller than your velocity scale. or you won't see any noise effect. I'm not interested in adding spiral motion to this but you can set it to a custom object and move it around and experiment to see what changes it would make. Next enable drag and add a bit of resistance to slow things down slightly. Right now particles spawn every 3 frames. I'll change that to 1 so they spawn every frame. Back in the emitter I'll increase the normal offset a bit and duplicate the points a few times. Now it's just about tweaking values until you find something you like. I'm happy with the results so let's move on to the next modifier, Trails. I'll add a trail modifier from the list. Set the trail age to around 10. You can also add some trail motion. 
maybe a slight upward movement. And even add noise if you like, though caching might take a bit longer depending on particles count. After that, it will play in real time in most cases. But I don't need noise for this one, so I'll keep it simple, just that subtle linear motion upwards. Finally, let's add a point cloud renderer. I changed the scale size to deceleration once. Or one of these arc ones. For now, I will stick with this arc up linear one. Let's add a camera to the scene. I hit Ctrl Alt Numpad 0 and align it to the view. Click this to lock it to the view and frame the scene like this. I'll increase the animation length a bit. Right now, it's spawning the same number of particles every frame. Let's animate that. I'll keyframe the duplicate points value at 1. Go to frame 60, increase it to 3 and keyframe it again. At frame 120, another keyframe. And then set it back to 1 towards the end. This way I can increase the particle spawning amount and then bring it back towards the end. Actually, wait, I just realized I am being an idiot here. It makes more sense to animate the point count instead. That'll give us smoother control. Later we can use this duplicate points value to easily increase or decrease particles without changing the keyframes. So I delete those keyframes and animate the point count. One at the beginning, then 150 at the 25th frame, 300 around the 70th and another keyframe at the 110th. Then I set it back to 1 at the end frame. Actually here I changed the emitter settings a bit. Set the offset type to random and set the normal offset to 0.2. And readjust the camera a bit. Let's work on the materials. I'll make a new window from the side and change it to the shader editor. Switch to render view and set the renderer to cycles. I'll make the world completely black. Right now the point cloud uses this default material, so I'll select it here. Let's modify it for a more interesting look. I'll add a principal BSD here. Everything goes black since we have no light in the scene, so let's add a sun lamp. Position it like this and increase the strength to around 2. Now here in the material, we have a few attributes we can work with. This color and emission values directly respond to this color and the emission strength. This NH attribute gives us 0 to 1 gradient based on particles age. I want particles to glow when they born, so I'll add a color ramp node, flip the sliders and adjust them like this. I set this to ease. This will act as our emissive mass, so I can multiply it with emission value and plug that into the emission strength. And I can plug the color attribute to the emissive color. Now that's the look I want. I'll fine tune the ramp and tweak these sliders to control the non-emissive areas. Let's add an area lamp and place it like this and point it towards the scene. I give the lamp a blue tint, set the beam shape to 90 degrees. To get some variation, try changing the seed value in the emitter. It will give you slightly different results each time. I'll stick with seed 1. Also duplicate the points to 4. Now let's do some compositing. Switch to compositor and enable use nodes. I set the compositor to camera. Then add a clear node. Set it to bloom and quality to high. I am not sure how this might look on YouTube with compression but 
Anyway, I preview the glare output and reduce the threshold a bit. Adds a bit of smoothing. Set the strength to 10 and slowly dial it down until I get something I like. Then I duplicate the node and this time set the strength back to 1 for now and increase the threshold. Reduce the smoothness. Set the strength to 10 again and bring it back down. Something like that. Let's see how this looks in different emission colors. Maybe some randomness. I adjust the values a bit more. Then I make a copy of this. Set it to strict. Adjust the angle and play with some other settings to add a subtle streak effect. After that, I'll add an RGB curves node to boost contrast. Add a slight green tint to highlights and a touch of blue in the shadows. I just realized I haven't increased the end frame of the simulator when I extended the animation length, so I set it to like 170. Then back in compositor, I add a lens distortion node. Give it a bit of distortion and some dispersion. And enable fit. And that's it. Our particle simulation made using particle effects. Before the render, I reframe the scene with a different focal length. And enable depth of field. Add an empty object and use that as the focus point. Then I select the simulation object and bake the simulation. By default, cache files are packed into the blend file, but you can set a custom path if you want to save them separately. Once that's done, I render out the animation using Fox Render Farm. Fox Render Farm is a leading online render farm service that I myself have been using for a few years. It's quick, secure, and reliable. Don't just take my word for it. So many great projects you have seen over the years have been rendered using Fox Render Farm. Sign up using the link in the description to get a $30 render coupon to start rendering. And that's it. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed the process. Don't forget to experiment and create your own amazing effects with particle effects. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.